Okay, so for those who are looking for just a low profile boom arm comparison, especially from Mayano and all the other ones that I currently have in my possession and stuff and my overall thoughts on it and everything, you can use the YouTube chapter markers or wherever within the play bar to skip ahead to the review and stuff like that. But for those who actually care about like my thoughts on the company, my interactions with the company, me being a small YouTuber or wherever, and seeing other people review products from this company and just based off my interactions with the type of company that Mayano is and everything like that and you're wondering my frustrations and why I probably won't be I would say reviewing any other products in the future then I would say stick around for this part just know that it's going to be a little bit ranty because I do suffer from uh, mental issues and one of the things is that Mayano actually triggered my PTSD and I had to wait a couple of days or whatever before I could even start recording the videos even though all my other videos that I had planned or wherever I had caught up on and did and everything like that so let me just go ahead and jump into this little rant or I would say um, little thoughts and opinions on the company. This is the third time I'm working with Mayano on a uh, product to do a video on. Um, the first time they reached out and everything, I was kind of aware of the company or whatever. Obviously, when you're a small content creator, you get business emails and stuff like that all the time from a lot of companies asking to, you know, do reviews and stuff for their products and everything. And then sometimes they'll take your videos and post it on their page. It's kind of like an unwritten rule kind of thing when it comes to it. They, sometimes a company will say, you know, they have if they if you receive a product from them and you do a review on it they have rights to your actual video or whatever even if they don't state it in an email or whatever i've seen this with mayano with the neocaster little audio mixer that i did or wherever i've seen cozy christopher who is another product youtuber who's kind of blowing up wherever in the review space um he did a video on his channel mayano took that video and put it on their channel so i'm not sure you know obviously the interactions with other content creators and youtubers out there and stuff like that but it makes me wonder with these other content creators are they really being truthful to you guys when they say that they don't let a company see their video before it goes live um sometimes crozy christopher would say it himself sometimes other comp other people who get products from other companies would say it themselves i've just noticed that mayano and some other companies are some of those companies that when they reach out to smaller content creators who may don't have over 10,000 subscribers or 100,000 subscribers, a lot of them try to manipulate the small content creator into letting them see the video before it goes live. And they do it kind of in an underhanded way. And by what I mean by that is that you're typing out stuff. You're not like in a business call or seeing a person face to face. So you don't know their emotions or how things are supposed to be perceived when they tell you something. But again, it might just be because I have PTSD and my PTSD is triggered from people who are trying to be deceitful and being underhanded or wherever and insulting my intelligence. Like the list of triggers go on and on and on due to the fact of what I dealt with while being in the military, being on deployment. So I'm very, very, I would say, cautious interacting with other people, uh, hence why I'm 100 percent disabled. But with doing that or wherever and seeing how Mayano is as emailing me, I tell them how I do my stuff and then they still like, hey, I want to see your video before it goes live under the guise of they want to make sure that the technical specifications or wherever are um, right or correct. And in my opinion, that is just a fallacy because there's no reason for them to look at it for a technical I would say aspect or whatever, because they should have put the technical aspects of the device, whether it's actually like something like a mechanism, like a microphone or audio mixer or something like the actual low profile boom arm, those specifications and all the requirements and everything they're trying to check the video for should already be not only on their website, but on the Amazon listing or wherever the product is sold. So a customer who is interested in like how much the product weighs or the length of like, let's say the reach of the microphone boom arm all that stuff should either been supplied in the email that they sent out to you to do the product you know review or again it should be listed on their website or something like that so if a user is interested and wants to know an answer to a possible question they have on it not only should the manufacturer should have it on their website in video form or written form or something like that or even on their youtube channel 
they should be doing that themselves. The, again, the job of the product reviewer is to review the product from a user point of view, how they would use the product, what they think of the product, stuff like that. I should not be reading out a spec list or something that should be found on your website. I see that a lot. Hence the Cozy Christopher review on the actual um, C2 Neo cast or whatever it was, audio mixer, he ran through the whole aspects and how like what each function did for the, the for the ca uh, for the caster and if that's what they discussed and that's what they wanted him to do or whatever for that video that's perfectly fine but in my personal opinion that's not what a reviewer does they get a product they see all the features and stuff like that they talk about what they didn't like about it they talk about what they did they talked about how somebody could use it in their workflow and stuff like that if a person who is looking at possibly purchasing the product wants to know how each feature is used they should be looking at the manufacturer of the product because that's the manufacturer's job to sell somebody a product if they don't do it themselves and they're relying on other content creators to do the job for them and then on top of that try to manipulate their video based on what they think or wherever it's like you're doing a job for them and you're not getting paid for it and people will say well you get the product for free a $50 product or wherever to put hours and hours into editing b-roll coming up with the script talking to the camera and stuff like that doing all that stuff taking time out of your day when you could be doing something else and they give you a free product that you're probably in all honesty a lot of these content creators are probably not going to reuse and it's just going to sit on the shelf until possibly using it for a comparison video also some of the products i have are sitting right there over on that shelf or wherever that i don't touch unless i need to use it for like a microphone comparison or something like that that's that's just the truth of the matter and the fact of, like I said, they're using the, the people who's getting, who have cameras and stuff like that. Instead of paying these people to do a video for them, they give them a product for free. They let them do all the hard work and then they steal the content under the guise of, oh, we gave you a free product that's going to get you views or whatever that's going to help you out inherently. No, if you paid me for a video, then maybe I will do that for you. If you paid me for a video and then was like, hey, I want you to do the video this way, whatever, because maybe we're a small company, we don't have, you know, the cameras, all the capabilities, wherever you seem talented in that way, let me pay you for your work. They're not paying you for your work. They're sending out a product that's probably, like I said, most of the time these companies are less than $100 or less than $200 that you're probably not gonna use and it's just gonna shit on itself anyways. So it's like you do all the work or wherever, and a company is telling you like Mayano and some other companies as well have told me what to put in the title, what to put in tags, what to put in the description, do this, that, and the third. And it's like, you're trying to run my YouTube channel. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not the best at learning algorithms and uh, SEO and all that stuff, but based on a lot of these companies, even Mayano, when they tell you to use certain titles and tags and stuff like that, it's like they're completely oblivious to actually advertising or marketing period. It's like that title makes no sense. That's not gonna grab a user's attention. That's not gonna help the algorithm find people who are interested in this product at all. That's not what you do. I, I'm better off using J chat GPT or something like that, or some AI program to actually render out something that's going to captivate an audience or wherever and allow me to get more views or wherever and i've done it on previous videos where companies tell me hey put this in the title put this as a tags or wherever and i told them no i will do my own stuff and i did and some of them are the most successful videos on my channel again and i'm not the person who knows all this stuff i don't have time to sit down and learn this stuff i could hire a you know social media manager which i would suggest multiple companies do in order to you know make some kind of splash or get into uh, i would say the area of exposing themselves to other people out there who are interested in their products but they don't do that they rely on content creators like me who have less than ten thousand or a thousand subscribers or even a hundred thousand subscribers to do all the work for them then they take the video and they put it on their channel and i've seen it to where my videos have done better and companies have took my videos and put it on the channel after asking me and i said okay and they're barely getting any views. They don't get any subscribers stuff because again, they don't do the same tactics that I do wherever. They just upload and they try to do their own tactics by using their own titles and tags and they're barely getting any customers. Whereas companies keep on trying to work with me because 
apparently I'm causing them to actually get exposure and people buying their products were based on how I did my video and stuff. And like I said, I'm not the best. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying I'm better than anybody out there or wherever when it comes to making videos and, and doing B-roll and all this stuff or wherever. I'm human. I make mistakes and everything too. But I don't like the fact of Mayano as a company. And I, mind you, again, I've worked with them three times. They've emailed me in four separate occasions to try to work with me on products. But I successfully worked with them for three products. And each time has been a different person from their marketing team. And every single time I get this just... I get I get this irritating feeling or whatever working with I don't know who's a part of their marketing team who's the head of it who's telling these people wherever I don't know if it's like a ling language thing because they're located in a different country or something and maybe they don't know how to uh I say interact with other people or something like that it could just be like i said my ptsd or whatever but it's like when i'm interacting with mayano it's happened with some other companies but every time I get a new representative reaching out from Mayano and I have to sit there and literally go through the rigmarole of telling them, hey, this is how I run my YouTube channel. This is how I do things. This is, I don't let companies see the video before it goes live. It's not a paid opportunity or whatever. You're not gonna put any input into my video and stuff. And I see other people do the same thing that I'm doing in emails or wherever, they'll say it in the video to you guys. But then when I watch the video, it's not done like how I do my videos. It's done to what the company has asked me to do in the emails. So that tells me right there that that YouTuber is lying. And I would be very, very careful going forward, at least from the company of Mayano, when somebody reviews one of their products and they tell you that the company did not see the video before it goes live, I would say 90% of them are probably lying. I'm just going to be 100% honest. A lot of them are lying because again, they're never done from a user point of view, any kind of problems or issues or wherever. And we'll get into what I'm talking about, especially with this. But again, any of their products or wherever, nobody really talks about it or wherever, unless they're already a high, I would say class YouTuber who has a significant like subscriber base or something like that. And they work with bigger companies. Like if they're doing a microphone review, they work with like the likes of Rode or something like that. And then they get approached by a smaller company like Mayano and they shit all over the mic, excuse my French. But it's just, the, it's just that's the only time I've seen anybody complain about the products like I did in my videos. Other than that, everybody's just playing nice because they wanna keep on receiving products from a company. And again, as you as the consumer, you need to be able to make an informed decision. And you can't do that when companies like Mayano and some other companies out there are sitting in there controlling the videos, controlling the creativity. This is supposed to be a platform where I'm telling people my thoughts and opinions, regardless if I bought the product myself or you're sending out a product to me. And again, this is the third time that they're sending me out a product. So by now, you would think they know how I do things. And I think the reason why they reached back out to me after I already specifically told them that this video was going to be behind or wherever two other videos that were already in the works. And I gave them the specified date that this video was gonna get released. They reached back out to me after a few days had passed and asked me like pretty much like, yo, where, where the, where's the video? Kind of like hurrying things around, making sure that I was doing things. And I think it's because they went back and saw that I had worked with them in the past. And this person then proceeded to ask me to see the video before it goes live and it's like why all of a sudden why would you do that stuff now and it's because you've seen the other videos that i have posted about your products and i was harsh on them now with all that being said i'm still going to give this my honest thoughts and opinions or wherever i had already came up with the the ideas and what i was going to talk about and all that stuff where before this incident happened but again because of this incident happening i had to cool off for a couple of days because that's how perturbed it made me with that being said let's go ahead and jump into the review of the mayano ba92 low profile boom arm in comparison to other microphone boom arms that i have in its likeness all right so it's been a few days since i've done that beginning part of the video and every time i try to record the follow-up part talking about these low profile boom arms they've been anywhere from 20 to uh, 30 minutes making this video about an hour long and i'm not trying to do that so i'm just going to tell you guys straight off the bat uh, mayano did send this microphone boom out for a review but what i'm going to tell you right now if you have a sit stand desk tldr if you have a sit stand desk 
then I'm going to leave a video that I did on this microphone boom arm, which is from IX Tech, um, which is a microphone boom arm that is their pro version of the low profile boom arm that comes with an extension rod. And this extension rod allows you to have your low profile microphone boom arm wherever still in that low profiles position, but just elevates it up wherever. So when you're standing, you can still use it in that low profile, um, as well as having a clamp that has a headset, um, I would say rest or wherever on it that's detachable. Um, so again, I'll put on price on screen wherever for the pro version. All right, so future squid here. I am looking at the prices for the microphone boom arms and grabbing them to put into the video. And I found one because I was looking up the so many different microphone boom arms that were like the IX Tech and the Mayana one and the Beacon one and stuff. I found one from a company called uh, Vivo, Vivio, wherever. This one is apparently around $54. It's the same make, model. Everything is literally the same as the IX Tech and the Mayana one for $54. The only thing is that they only have it in black. They don't have it in white from what I can see. Maybe you can find a white one out there but $54 that's cheaper like I said than the IX Tech one the Mayana one and definitely the Beacon one a manufacturer out there is making these and companies like Beacon, Mayano, Vivo and IX Tech and stuff are just paying to put their name on it and then they're charging whatever they want to charge so again if you like the build quality you like the look or wherever for some reason of the Mayano, IX Tech or maybe even you've been looking at the Beacon one go with this one especially if you're looking for a black one it's $54 there's no reason for you to pay any more other than maybe you have a sit stand desk and maybe you will get some use case out of the IX Tech one like I do but at the same time I still would just go with the Vivio one unless you need a different color for some reason wherever your setup or wherever if that's the case then even the fine fine has a pink one of their low profile boom arm now out or wherever so ladies or anybody who likes that for their setup um you can find it on Amazon or wherever for 60 around 62 dollars I'll leave that linked in the description but they have the black one for about 56 and they have the white one for about 58 and then um like I said, IX Tech did come out with a white version for multiple microphone boom arms. I'll leave all of them linked in the description. So if you want a traditional scissor microphone boom arm, but you want that in white, you know, they have it as well. But roughly all the white variants of their microphone boom arms are sitting around $84. But like I said, if you can get away with the black one and you just want a low profile boom arm, you want it cheap, I can contest the build quality of it because again, it's literally the same microphone boom arm. So $54 that's fine i think it's a good enough price or wherever to get it um so again all of it will be linked in the description but please don't go out and buy the mayana one or the beacon one or even the ix tech one unless you have a stand desk don't buy any of them unless you for some reason like the build quality and you want the white one or wherever it's 84 dollars from ix tech but even then i still would pressure you to find the fine fine one and get the white one or look at the vivio one and similar ones and do a little bit more digging and maybe you can find a white variant at the same price at 54 dollars uh with that being said yeah back to pasquid it has this stuff and the non-pro version that i think still has the headphone rest or whatever just doesn't come with the, some other attachments and the extension rod i might be wrong on that so definitely check their website for the actual um specifications and then on top of that they did give me a code that i didn't mention in that video but it was in the description i believe um of squid head joe 12 that saves you 12 percent off now i didn't do anything affiliate wise with them or anything like that to set it up to earn commissions or anything like that because let's be honest those things or wherever are just a, a rip off you know you i might get 100 people to buy you know the microphone boom arm and use that code and i might get eight cents you know what i'm saying so it's kind of pointless to do that so i didn't do that but from what i understand like i said the code is still active i might be wrong but last time i checked it was still active so that saves you a little bit more and like i said if you have a sit stand desk and go with the ix tech pro version or wherever it's very it comes very very handy i've used this microphone boom arm multiple times to do microphone tests over here and it just comes in handy like i said now moving on if you have just a regular desk maybe a small desk or something like that and you don't want something too heavy or whatever but you want a option of having white or black ix tech did drop a white version um, of their low profile boom arm but it doesn't come in that pro kit with the extension rod and the headrest or whatever. So I'll still leave it linked in the description, but just know 
that um, it's a smooth sheen just like this one or wherever so it's easy to clean and everything and it looks nice it's just I think that pro kit is probably going to come out a little bit later probably this year I would imagine I'm getting one pretty soon or wherever and as well as a microphone of theirs to do a review on so stay tuned to the channel if you want to see how it looks and everything but again you get the black one you get the white version if you don't want to spend that much wherever again because this thing is just holding your microphone then I go with the fine fine bm88 um they have a black and a white version and then a black version as well i call this the white and black version because there's still black points on it it's not a white version neither uh fine fine or elgato with their white versions have it and i think even the ix tech their white version has some black on it so again just keep that in mind or wherever uh when you're getting this stuff that it's not actually white it's white and black with that being said uh the bm88 it's hard to pull off i would say the covers or wherever it's really really hard and the reason why it's like that is because once you slide these things up and you slide your xlr cable in and everything and you're done it clicks into place both of them do so even if you get snagged and i've had it happen a, a few times where your xlr cable or whatever cable you're running into snags it's not going to just pull off the actual microphone cover uh the channels or wherever for your microphone boom arm now i complained about that in the microphone boom arm comparison between the elgato low profile boom arm and the bm88 from fine fine i've been made painfully aware in the comment section that elgato since then has you know improved their magnets or wherever and the um other aspects or wherever of the low profile boom arm uh, and apparently I have just an early version, which makes sense because I got it, like I said, roughly a few months after it first dropped. So it's cool that they made improvements. I'm glad people are not having the issues with the magnets like I was having. But even so, why does it cost $100? It's absolutely insane to me that we have been conditioned to believe that something that is literally just holding our microphones needs to cost $99 or $100 or whatever. It's absolutely absurd that people are defending and it's like oh it's made out of metal it has you know the 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 features of the xlr cable coming with the magnet cover channels and stuff and improvements and all that stuff and realistically like i've said in that video you're not moving the xlr cable all the time unless you're doing some kind of podcast setup or wherever and you need low profile boom arms for whatever reason and maybe you're you know shrinking down how many guests you have or wherever so you need to take away microphones and microphone boom arms and stuff taking it away and storing it and everything i could see being a little bit easier for you when you just have the magnets you can just pop it off take the cables out and everything like that but that's going to be a very unique scenario and even if that's the case that's a convenience case and even that's the case it still shouldn't be a hundred dollars it's absolutely crazy because for two more seconds you have something a little bit more reliable with the clicks of and on top of that you're saving money whereas you can get two of these for your podcast setup or wherever or your business at whatever for the price of one elgato one so even in that aspect it's not justified for having a hundred dollar microphone boom arm because again it's just holding your microphone and you're just pushing it away for convenience sake and then bringing it back or wherever to, i don't understand why people are justifying elgato's price point not to mention with that is that beacon or wherever comes out with their own low profile boom arm that's just like this and what i think is is that ix tech and mayano has paid the manufacturer of these microphone boom arms or wherever to put their names on it and release their own products and that's why they're lower in cost in comparison to the beacon one and the beacon one from what i've seen or wherever it was like 120 bucks or wherever i put on screen how much it costs but elgato and 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 beacon are just absurd that they're charging this and, and everybody's like yeah that's that's perfectly fine for for microphone boom arm and it's just like i don't know why again we're conditioned conditioned into believing that this is okay that we've grown uh accustomed to and just numb like to the absurdity of some of these things that are costing so much for content creators and just people who are looking to have stuff in their setup and we just come accustomed to it we're just like yeah desensitized like yeah this is perfectly fine this is how it should be you know this is this makes sense it's okay and i just keep seeing that in the video that i did the comparison with the bm88 and the elgato one that everybody was okay with it and it's just crazy to me it's like don't y'all value the heart your hard-earned money you can get two of these for the price of it and it's doing the same thing and people are still saying nah man i'll get the elgato one nah elgato has the white and black version or wherever now it's fine i can i can get that if you're looking for one just just clamp to your desk get this one the reason why i don't say 
get the Elgato or one or the Mayano one or wherever and stick with the IX Tech is that even with the Mayano one or wherever, both the IX Tech one right here and the Mayano one, they both detach or wherever like this or wherever and they clamp on the bottom, which is fine. But the problem is, is once your XLR cable gets snagged, you see how much that's giving already? It's, it's, it's gone. That's, that's, that's the problem. Even if you sit here and attach it and you pull on it, it's gone. So once that XLR cable gets snagged in there, even with this, you know, wider channel and stuff like that, it's going to pop off, you know, and not all the time is your cable going to get snagged. It might be, happen every now and then or something like that. Um, so your result may vary. Some people might not run into that issue, but again, I rather just have the peace of mind and not having to try to put the XLR cable back or wherever and just have this. Cause again, even with the IX tech sending it out, wherever doing a video on it, the Mayano one sending out, do a video on it, me paying for the Elgato, uh, fine, fine, send this one out or wherever for review based on all these, wherever and using a wherever having the insurance of this actually clicking into place and securely locking in. And like I said, even if somehow the locks or wherever break, which I find it very hard that it would happen or wherever, I think that these little things popping off the actual Mayano or the IX tech, and even with the improvements from the Magnus from Elgato, I would imagine those will pop off before this one, just based on them having them in person, using them other than the improved magnets on the Elgato. Cause the only time I've seen anybody actually do anything with that is when they pull the XLR cable and it's like, oh, the magnets don't move if I pull the XLR cable. So if it gets snagged and it's like, I've never seen anybody actually like sit here and try to do this wherever with it, because it's going to pop off. You know what I'm saying? With fine, fine, the one I can sit here and literally try to pull it and it won't come off where I just showed you with minimum force or wherever that the Mayana one and the IX tech, again, the both the build same quality and everything. It's just that one paid for their name to be put on a different way than the other. And they roughly cost around the same amount. So I imagine these, you know what I'm saying? These are plastic other than the, the metal that the other, the microphone boom arm is made out of otherwise, but these little covers are plastic. I imagine these hooks or wherever probably would break or wherever more so than the ones that are on the fine, fine one. Um, just because of, of the way they're they're made or wherever and the way they slide on and everything. I just I just find it hard that these are going to break or wherever. The only downside, like I said, is that the white one is gets a little bit more dirty than their black one. The black one is more finished like this. So that's probably my only complaint about this one is that, like I've said in the video, uh, when I did the review, it does seem like it would probably get a little bit more dirtier and uh, scuff up a little bit more. But as long as you're taking care of your equipment, that's what you should be doing in the first place, regardless if you're spending $100 on something or even $50 on something. That's what somebody told me about my Elgato uh, clamp or wherever. And when I was using the Elgato uh, arm, microphone boom arm, they said I was rough my equipment because they never had any issue or whatever. And it seemed like the way they described it, they had one of the newer versions and I had one of the older versions. And on top of that, accusing somebody of being rough with their equipment when they have hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of equipment within their space and that person probably doesn't. And on top of that, they don't do what I do and everything like that. And they're not here in person to sit here and tell me that I'm mishandling my equipment. For them to say something like that just shows me that they just don't care if somebody else had a problem with a product. It's possible that somebody else has problems with the product. I talk glowingly about the Fine Fine BM88. Somebody out there could buy this and have a horrible time with it. Same thing with the IX Tech, the Mayano one, and even the improved version of the Elgato one. Because everything that's man-made is not perfect. I am not perfect just as a human being, period. So if I make something, doesn't mean every single thing or in every single iteration or whatever, I could have had one of the newer versions and still had the same problems and issues. You know what I'm saying? So sitting there saying that somebody else intentionally damaged a product so they can make a video years later talking bad about it when they get a product for free or wherever, it's just kind of weird. Like, yeah, I set that up years later to be able to do that. It's just, it's just weird to me. I'm talking about my personal experience using products and stuff like that. So you as the, you as the viewer can make an informed decision. And I'm telling you, even if you don't want to trust anything that I say, just looking at the numbers of how much this stuff costs, 
you should be staying away from the Mayana one and the Elgato one. And the reason why I'm saying stay away from the Mayana one is because there's no value here, just like the Elgato one. Whereas the iX Tech, like I said, at least with the pro version, you're getting something for a sit stand desk and you're getting, like I said, the headphone hanger. So even if you wanted to go with something like this, you still should be going with the cheaper one that's going to not really sacrifice uh, the sturdiness or wherever or the product quality, but it's still going to be cheaper. And like I said, with the iX Tech one and the BM88, from what I, I've seen from both of these microphone boom arms, they're just going to be better. And that's just my honest opinion. You know what I'm saying? Unless you're going for a black and, and yellow like aesthetic, I don't see why you would get the Mayano one over one of these two. That's just my personal opinion. So Mayano's probably not going to like that or wherever. They told me to do a whole bunch of different other stuff. But the one thing that I did adhere to is showing you guys a comparison to all the ones I do own. That's what they said for me to do in the video. That's what I was going to do in the first place. And that just, again, shows the incompetence of whoever's looking at these channels, suggesting products and wanting to do products or wherever reviews with co co content creators because they always sit there and say that they've been watching your channel or wherever and they haven't been watching your channel. Because, again, they would have seen what I talked about, the Elgato low profile, the fine, fine low profile and the IX tech one. They would have seen that this one is the same exact one. So they would have seen there was no point to send it out. But hey. I, I guess I got another low profile boom arm that I will probably not use and it will just sit there on the desk or on the on, on a shelf or something like that. That it would just sit there. I don't I don't know. Maybe I, I don't I don't know. So with that being said, hopefully this you know video actually helps somebody out deciding what they needed as far as a low profile boom arm. Again, to reiterate, if you want a sit stand desk low profile boom arm iX Tech all the way pro version. Again, it'll be linked in the description. If you're looking for something just to hold your microphone, because that's all this, this is doing or wherever, you don't care. You just want a white one or a, a black one or wherever. Find, find one, be linked in the description. And of course, because I'm kind of obligated that I have to kind of do it, I'll leave the Mayano one down in there. But in my personal opinion, don't buy it. Um, I'm not even going to leave a link for the Elgato ones because there's just, there's no point. There's literally no point. You shouldn't be buying it for something like you, you Nobody on God's green earth should be buying this microphone boom arm for $99. It makes absolutely no sense. It doesn't even do anything like I said previously with the Joby microphone boom arm. It doesn't have a cup holder or a headphone hanger. And at least Joby is caught like having something like this. You know what I'm saying? Elgato, there's nothing new here. There's nothing. They're relying on their name at this point. Like the use the, the, the creativity on their end for coming out with products that actually makes sense or wherever that's actually worth the price they're charging, that creativity or wherever is plummeting. And it's taking forever for people to realize that they're creatively bankrupt. They keep coming out with version twos or wherever of products that already exist instead of pushing the industry forward anymore. They're not really doing that. Every now and then it's like a, a slight bump and upgrade or wherever, you know what I'm saying? It's like when you buy a cell phone one year and then the next year there's a slight improvement for cameras and you're like, well, I don't know if I need to upgrade, but I'm going to because it's a part of like a free upgrade plan with my carrier. That That's the only reason why you would get an upgrade or wherever. But essentially, they're not pushing the industry forward anymore. There's like they've gotten to a comfortable spot and they're just coasting based off their name. They're not really innovating. Uh, and I would say just now they recently, as of time of recording, I think it was yesterday, dropped a new refresh to their 1080p 60 frames per second webcam for $150. And I've talked about it before and I'll probably do a review comparison in the future, but there is a webcam 4K30 for $150 from Onsbot that has the AI tracking, has all the software and stuff like that, just like the Elgato one, but it's 4K30 for $150. And you tell me Elgato couldn't do that? Come on, man. The I don't understand why people are defending this, man. I, I don't get it. It's just, it's, it's absolutely, let me stop. It's, it's going to be a rant. It's going to be another rant. Let me stop. With that being said, y'all take care. Have a squid-tastic day. God bless you and yours. And deuces. And Miano, no hard feelings or whatever, but this is the last time.